All right. This last video is going to cover another really helpful accessibility tool for um, users who either can't use a mouse for whatever reason or would prefer to use a keyboard and use a mouse minimally or anything like that. Um, this tool is known as the tab order and it allows users to use tab in order to interact with different elements of your applications. Um, this uh, will cover F 2.4, which is about the tab order and A 2.5, which is about setting the tab order. A 2.5 is actually going to provide great practice for you. So make sure you actually run through the apply the concepts um, stuff so that you can actually practice this yourself. So there's this idea of focus in an application where when you, let's say, click on a text box, Right now, the text box is highlighted in blue. Yeah, my cursor is in here as well, which is why you can tell that I am uh, currently in that application. But specifically, the fact that it's all highlighted in blue and that I'm able to interact with it and all that kind of stuff means that in this case, the bill uh, text box has focus. This is the part of the application that is immediately you know, ready to be interacted with. If I type anything, it will um, go into this bill area. I can click over here to tip percent and the focus, focus moves over to the tip percent area. When I hover, you know, when I actually click calculate tip and there's this blue border around calculate tip, now the focus is over the calculate tip button which means that, um, you know, whatever element here has focus is the one that is immediately ready to be interacted with, especially when it comes to the keyboard. If I press enter right now, it's going to try to calculate the tip. Let me uh, clear out this tip and then, um, oh, it's hard to show off right here, um, but it's ready for me to interact with it. I can interact with it by pressing enter is if I've clicked it. Uh, and I know I can do that because the focus right now is on this calculate tip button. If I put the focus back on bill, um, now I can type in here and start interacting with this bill text box. So that's focus. Now, when the user presses tab, when they're in an application, or if the user uses an access key, a certain control is going to receive focus, which means that the it can't accept user input through the keyboard. So if I head back to the restaurant right here, um, we can look at all the uh, different access keys, all that kind of stuff. If I go over to tip, now that has uh, focus. I gave it focus by pressing Alt T. Um, it doesn't work so much for the buttons per se, the access keys for the, the buttons, but definitely with the text boxes, I can use access keys to change the focus because I'm, you know, trying to interact with the different ones. However, uh, I can press, um, I'll go back into bill real quick. I can press the tab button and you'll see that now the tip percent has focus. I can press tab again and you'll see that there's now focus around calculate tip and I can press tab again and there's now focus around exit. Uh, so you can see that the tab button is changing the uh, focus within the application. Specifically, when I press tab in an application, the focus cycles through different controls. It's a whole cycle. I, I can keep on pressing tab and eventually I'll return to the first control that actually got focus. The order is determined through something called the tab order. It's just the order of controls that get focus when I um, actually pr start pressing tab. And then shift plus tab will cycle in the other direction. If I open up the restaurant tip application again, I'm in bill, I can press tab to go to tip percent, calculate tip, exit. I can press shift, you know, press and hold shift, and then press tab to go the other direction. And we can actually see that it's a loop if I go to exit and then go back to bill again. 
And that will be the cycle right there. Bill, tip percent, calculate tip, exit, back to bill. Notice that these are all, it's cycling through the controls that we're actually able to, um, you know, that we're actually able to interact with. And then when I'm using tab to cycle through and give things focus, I can press enter and it activates that button as if I've clicked it, or it lets me type in the text box also as if I've clicked it. Now the actual tab order, the order in which um, the controls of an application are cycled through, that order is determined by the tab index. It's a property of all the different controls. And essentially, you know, the, the tab index says, okay, this is the first control that gets focus, and then the second, and the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, and so on and so forth, all the way until they end. You've assigned all the controls a an index, um, and then that actually determines the, you know, when I press tab, which controls are going to um, actually get focus. So it's called tab index. There's you're essentially making a list, an ordered list of all of the controls in the order that they are going to receive focus in. And the index into that list is the posi is essentially the position of that item in the list. So that index says here, here in the list is where this control happens to be. And based on where it is in the list, that's going to determine when it gets tab, you know, when it gets focused, when the user's hitting uh, tab. And then when the user is focused on the item and then they hit tab, it goes to the next item in the list and so on and so forth. Now tab index is interesting. If you've never seen a programming language before, this might be strange to you. Uh, the tab index takes a numerical value of zero or greater, where zero is the first control given focus when the user hits tab. So the list starts counting at zero. Zero is the first item, one is the second item, two is the third item, three is the fourth item, and so on and so forth. It starts counting at zero. And that's a whole computer science thing. We're not going to worry about why we start counting at zero. But in computer science, you start counting at zero. Uh, and that's true for this as well. We start counting at zero for the tab index. So the first item, and this is really important, the first control to get focus when you hit tab is zero. You put zero in the tab index. That's really important. Do not, I would not recommend forgetting that. Now, not all controls have a tab index property. Uh, for example, like a picture box does not have a tab index property. You can't give it focus through hitting tab or give it focus really at all. Um, only certain controls have tab index properties. And even if they have a tab index properties, that doesn't always mean they're going to get focus. For example, you might have seen a lot of labels that don't actually get focus. Um, or anything like that. Like the, there's a lot of controls on the uh, application that don't actually get focused because the only things getting focused were um, the the only things getting that were getting focus were the text boxes and the buttons in that particular example. So even if it does have a tab index property, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to get focus. And we'll see more about that in just a sec. The controls that you add to an application are given a default tab index value. That's probably going to be based on the order that they're actually added to the application, but that might not be correct. It might not be a good order. So you'll have to actually manually reset the tab index values yourself. And the way that you want to manually reset the tab index, once you add all of your controls and you've arranged your GUI and all that kind of stuff, um, like you, you put all the controls up, you, uh, for all of your labels and captions and stuff, you give, um, access keys, you assign all the access keys, you do all of that at the, a after you've done all that work with the GUI, 
then it's time to reset the tab index values. So what you do is you make a list of all of the controls that can accept user input or responds to user actions. You order all of those controls in, in the order in which users will want to access those controls. So for the um, example that we saw before with the restaurant tip calculator, the order is going to be bill, tip percent, calculate tip, and exit. That's the order in which the user is going to want to interact with all of those controls. So bill would be the first, the, uh, the, the text bill, then text uh, tip, per what was it? Text percentage or something like that. Then uh, button calc and then button exit. That's the order of the controls that users will actually work with. Now, if any of those controls have an identifying label, you would put that label immediately before the control. And I'll, I'll show you an example of the list for restaurant tip. But identifying labels will come directly before the control that they're associated with, and they get their own tab index values. So now what happens is the list becomes a label bill, text bill, label percent, text percent, uh, button calc, button exit. Then once you create and order that list, you start assigning tab index values at zero. So label bill gets, lab gets the uh, index zero. The text box itself gets one. So text bill gets one. Label percent gets two. Text percent gets three. Calculate tip gets four. Exit gets five. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. And we can see that same list right here. Label one for bill, text bill, label two for tip, text percentage, button calc, button exit. Now there's other controls um, that can't actually accept user input. And they're going to go at the very bottom of this list. It doesn't matter what order um, you actually put those other controls in. So for example, the uh, tip calculator, the tip, uh, sorry, the tip calculator, like title label, this uh, tip box and the actual label tip that you, um, you know, put the output into the actual calculated value into those will have a um, tab index property. And that tab index property does need to have a value in it. So you just stick all of those other labels and stuff, all the other controls that aren't interacted with, but yet have a text index, uh, a tab index value. You just stick them at the bottom of the list after all of the um, controls that the user interacts with, and then you can just assign them whatever. So button exit was the last value, it was the last tab index value for, you know, the user interactable controls. Um, that last tab index value is five. So then in no particular order, you just chuck the other labels on, give it six, seven, eight, and then picture box one right here, the uh, funny little picture of the waiter. Uh, picture box one does not have a tab index value, so you don't even need to worry about that. But you're going to make this list on like a piece of paper to the side or a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet or whatever. Like this is something you do on the side, but it helps you keep track of what the tab index value should be. It helps you actually decide what that tab index value should be based on the order that the user interacts with everything. So that's really important. It's important to meticulously go through this list and make sure everything is in the right order. The other reason why the tab index list ordering is actually really important right here is because of the access keys. Um, this actually helps us know that text bill is associated with the access key for this label, or text percentage is associated with the access key for this label right here. So that is really important. You want to make sure that the label is before it's associated text box or if 
the identifying label is associated with any other type of control. The identifying label has to be directly before its associated control. And of course, um, the buttons don't have labels like that. They have inbuilt captions, so we don't really need to worry about that. But tab index is really important, not just for figuring out the um, order in which focus is given to controls when we hit tab. That's very important. Very important thing for accessibility, and that ordering is very important for accessibility. But also, it's important in associating the access keys with their text boxes or whatever other controls. So really, really pay attention to the tab index right there. It's so important. So here we've got a screenshot of the um, restaurant tip application uh, with the actual tab index value showing up on each of the different components of that application. So uh, you can see right here, label and text box have are right next to each other in the tab order, zero, one, two, three. Um, and then the buttons, four, five. This is great because it's in a good order for everything. In fact, we can actually see the order of the, well, the tab order right here. Although um, these extra arrows are kind of superfluous because this is all stuff that won't ever get focused anyway. It can't actually get focused. So Windows is gonna cycle through all this and say, uh, okay, so if you hit tab when exit is already in focus, it'll say, Okay, so next is tip calculator. Oh, can't give that focus. Can't give that focus. Can't give that focus. Uh, go back to zero. Can't give that focus. Let's put focus on this text box right here. So that uh, that that is what's going on with the tab order for this program based on the ordering that we described in this previous list right here. But it's very important that the identifying label has a value of one less than the associated text boxes value. And it's very important that you do this in the order of the user actually interacting with the application. If it's out of order, uh, a user that can't use their mouse and instead has to rely on their keyboard is going to be spending a lot of time hitting tab until they get to the next one and then hitting tab until they get to the next one. And, so on and so forth. It could be a little bit confusing. So make a good tab order, make your own list and figure out the index values based on what I previously said on how to actually make a good tab order. All right, well, that is tab order. It's a very important part of any application. So be very careful when it comes to making sure your application has a good tab order. Between access keys and tab order, you're going to make things a lot easier for anyone who isn't able to use a mouse for whatever reason. And that is, you know, a very good and kind thing to do. So I highly recommend you do it. That's all the videos for this week. Um, have, have fun, have fun with the, uh, the assignments.